All right, all right, we're doing this live. Um, I don't know if any. I'm 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 a new uh, teacher, sensei, baby sensei. I think they call me. Um, on Ethan Becker's um, Discord, link is in the description. If you don't know, I'm down in the drawing corner. If you guys want to come check it out, I will actually be inking, 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 using this again Pentel cheap crappy four dollar <laughs> brush but um <clears throat> and using black star oh i'm sorry it's upside down black star and that's kind of backwards all right you're looking at everything backwards and upside down so all right that's new i didn't realize that but uh all right so i am like i said a new teacher here uh, but I am doing this also live streaming on my channel, Blacklist Universe. Hey, guys. It's okay that you're here and not on the Discord. I mean, you just left that Discord, sir. <laughs> well, come on back in, man. You can be on the stream. Mirror vision. Yes, we are. We are doing mirror vision. I wonder if there's some way I can adjust that. I don't know. User settings. Voice and video. Test. Test. That works. Pro webcam. Test video. Advanced. Ah, forget it. Backwards works fine. Can you guys hear me? Over there. Over. Over there. Over there. All right. I'm going to get that mouse off of there. All right. So this is a patch I'm doing for my secret project. Um, I couldn't, uh, I got some, some bad info. Um, I'm just going to use this here and I may also be, uh, adding a character to my JLA piece from drawn and Qu drawn and quizzical. No, drawn and quartered last week. <laughs> drawn and quizzical was last night. Um, this brush is not helping me. Let me clean it up real quick. All right. Well, at least I've got you. What's a Discord? That sold? No, it's not sold yet, Megs. Um, but uh, uh, I'm adding a hawk girl to it because it was requested by uh, someone. That he's, uh, but that's just that's just for the print. He's he's just getting the print. Um, I hope he understands that. I wasn't able to post anything. Oh, really? Why not? Turn the light on. Is my light not bright enough? It's bright enough. Is it not bright enough? It should be bright enough. Oh, really? Says Megs. Megs, are you interested in that piece? Is that what you're trying to tell me? Over there. So. I will just be inking. Uh, I'll probably try to talk about my process. Why Why I'm using a brush instead of quill is um, I, I love the brush. You get uh, so many different textures from it. Um, obviously, the quill, you can do other textures. But I find the brush to be more organic and, and diverse in the kind of lines you can get. Ugh. Man, I need to be in like some sort of a hermetically sealed room where little, little tiny strings, dust strings, don't constantly harass my art process because it's super, super annoying. Yeah, so um, you know, if you're watching me on YouTube, you can't really jump in. If you're watching me on the Discord, though, um, you can actually jump in this room and chat. Unless you say something stupid and I need it. Ha ha. So until then, I will be just working away here. Hermetically sealed by hermits. Yeah, is it hermetic? It's hermetically, isn't it? That's the right word. 
Remember uh, Johnny Carson used to do that gig on uh, when he did uh, his little fortune teller. Wasn't it hermetically sealed? Was it like hermeneutically sealed? <laughs> Thermonetically, thermonuclearly sealed. That was clearly the case. So yeah, I threw the I threw an invite to a few of the people um, for the for th a few of the artists to join uh, Ethan Becker's um, Discord, but I don't think I, I I mentioned why. But yeah, it's because I am a teacher over there now. They uh, bumped me up. He's already going through that face. Jeez, Mike, what? Going through that face? What do you mean going through that face? I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. I really should schedule these things, but was, this is really just kind of a test run for me. I wanted to see if I could uh, get Discord to work along with the uh, the whole YouTube thing. And is this the super secret project? Indeed it is, Andrew. And you'll see me thinking I'm pushing and I'm pulling lines, so... Uh, some people just do one or the other. Some anchors only push or pull. This is pulling when you're pulling towards yourself. And then when I'm doing this, you're push going away from your body. You're pushing. Um, I, I can do longer, smoother lines pulling or pushing. <laughs> and then this, I can do smaller, more concise lines when I am pulling. So that's why I do the difference. Do 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 over there. So uh hold on Pablo I saw you mentioned something about the Discord. Um who is Ethan Becker? Ethan Becker is a very entertaining young YouTuber uh, who does a drawing channel on YouTube. Um, and he started up a Discord not, I don't think it was that long ago. Oops. And I popped in there because I, because um, I'm on Discord and I'm like, hey. And then I saw him uh, doing a little a live stream like on Discord, you can do live streams, which I've never taken advantage of on my own Discord. But um, I saw that he was live with some other people, and I jumped on there, and I was like, hey, uh, I just want to know, because he'd mentioned Sean Galloway. You guys know Cheeks, right? Um, although he's never been on my show, so maybe you don't know him. But you know of him. He's one of the guys doing the trading cards and stuff. Mike laughs like George Walker Bush. <laughs> Uh, I'm reading the rules of the Discord. It says no gore, so I don't know how you got to be a teacher there, Mike. Wah, wah. Hardy har har. Oh, yeah. Is that... Okay, I'll try not to ink that spot. <laughs> um, I'm not posting gore. I'm just inking it live on the Discord. What is that? I seem to have gotten a notification. But if I click on it, it'll be like a private message. I don't know what to do. What do I do? Do I turn it off and then go address it? Oh, so yeah, I was talking about how I got on this on the Ethan Becker thing. Um, yeah, I was just talking to him. Uh, I was asking him if he knew Cheeks because he mentioned he talks about him and how much he loves. Could you turn that down, please? It's so loud. Hey, it's a Pablo Romero, but he's muted. Can you unmute yourself, Pablo? Look, it's my first student. Oh yeah, and then you jump if that if you come on here. Do I have to unmute you? All right, then I can put me up there. 
I can invite the people. Copy. And here, I will paste it here. So we can get more people to the Discord. Pablo, muted. I think you muted yourself, man. No? Say something funny. <laughs> um, I backed an Eden Miller sketch card. I understand. Who are you talking? And what Andrew? Andrew? What did Andro say? I backed the Sean Galloway sketch card before I backed a Mike S. Miller card. Oh, <laughs> right on. Yeah, so we were talking about him. And then um, I was mentioning, you know, I was, I was telling him he should do a um, crowdfunding campaign. And then I told him uh, about mine. And so one of, the, uh, one of the moderators is like, hey, do you want to be a teacher on this channel? And I'm like, or do you want to help out on this channel? I think is what he actually said. Why is the brush doing this? Why, brush? Don't do bad things, brush. Isaac, can you go turn the AC up? I don't know why it suddenly shut off. It's getting hot. Um, and I said, yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm here to help. You know, I want to help other artists learn things and stuff. And then I don't have a mic. Oh, all right. Well, at least you're here. <laughs> Down to like 72. Okay. Um, so yeah, they gave me the status of a uh, baby sensei, they call it. Um, and so here I am trying out, trying to see, not trying out as in trying out, but trying to see what, what all I can do. I don't know if they have schedules and stuff. It's it's not quite as organized as... Uh... Well, that's fine. I'm not very organized either. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying. Just kind of testing it out for the time being, and then we'll see if I can actually schedule stuff and make it a regular, uh, regularly scheduled program for the Ethan Becker... Discord. Again, link is in the description. If you want to jump in here, feel free. Pablo has no mic, so he can't talk to me and entertain me while I'm drawing. I'm learning, he says. I'm learning. So what's the point in being in the audio chat without a mic? Uh, he's just keeping me company visually. <laughs> I guess. I don't know. I don't know. Why are you harassing Pablo? It's a Pablo. But, uh, yeah, it's cool, man, because, you know, Becker, Ethan has a, uh, Ethan Becker. I have to, I have to make sure that I'm referring to the correct Ethan. <laughs> the good Ethan, Becker. Um, yeah, he's got, uh, I think, 350,000 subs on YouTube. So if you're, if you're not already subbed to him and, uh. He's, he's really kind of showing people how to do popular artistic YouTubing because, uh, you know, there's a lot of us out there who do just very technical, I might say boring, uh, art streams. I get it. I get it. Um, but, yeah, Ethan has, uh, has learned or taught himself. I'm not sure um how to uh really pump up the volume on the on his art streams and they're really fun like even if he's doing just boring ex explan explan explanatory explanatory stuff yeah i guess explanatory is the right word um it's it's still fun uh and i know some of us are like you know i like the boring explanatory stuff i do too but I'm talking about trying to reach a wider audience of art lovers and art artists. And uh, I think Becker does a really good job. So uh, it's a good va video uh, or it's a good channel for those of us who are artists trying to build YouTube channels. It's a good channel to uh, study 
study what he does. I don't mean copy him, right? He's got his own style. I wouldn't want to do an Ethan Becker clone channel, but the concept of, of what's behind how he makes his videos interesting is very, uh, very helpful, I think. So I'm going to be trying to do that as time permits uh, on my own channel and trying to make my make my art videos more interesting, visually, dyna visually dynamic. Um, so it won't just be me here chit-chit-chatting away. Eric Dane... Eric Dane says, hey, Mike, I'm thinking of making a comic. I just found out that Cyberfrog's trademark expired in 2008. No, it didn't. Did it? I was thinking of calling it Cyberfrog Traditional Marriage. Do you think? <laughs> I don't think that's accurate. I don't think. Uh, the tra Did it? Oh, I don't know. I would doubt that he ever even trademarked it. I mean, I never trademarked Immortal 2. So. I'm not telling you to run out and copy it. <laughs> um, just don't tell Preston. <laughs> uh, just kidding. Um, there's enough EVS drama going on right now. I'm coming here to see Mike relax away from that drama. Yes, yes. This is non-drama. Thank you very much. The only drama should be in the art itself. The power of drama should exist in the pictures I create. How many people? We got 27 people watching now. Welcome, welcome, one and all. Thank you for joining me on this... Uh, what's it called? Uh... Maiden voyage of doing a drawing stream on Ethan Becker. You know what? Let me hold on. I'm going to turn this off real quick because I want to check. Oh, don't know what I'm supposed to do. So just hello. <laughs> oh, P Money. No, you got to go into the Ethan Becker. Yeah, J Pods too. Um, no, you got to go into the Ethan Becker one and then scroll down here. I'll show you. So you go over here, right? You see this whole long list of stuff? Scroll all the way down to where it says Drawing Corner and then just jump in there. Jump in there. Click on that one. Drawing Corner. And that'll be you guys and me. I think I'm home all day next Thursday. I might please do this next Thursday. I might actually be able to join. Oh, so you weren't going to. I see. I see. You're just messing with me. I got it, man. Whatever. All right. So. Hey, Mike. Good to be here on your live stream. Thank you, Joshua Gilliland. It's not, it's not good. You have to give a thumbs up to the rules first. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's locked. It's locked. Yeah, you have to give it. Yep, there's there's uh, some uh, not hoops you have to jump through, but you have to go and you what is it in your messages? I think you get a rules notification, and then you have to go give it a thumbs up in order to be allowed to uh, post stuff or join stuff or talk or talk or breathe. <laughs> I forgot about that. Thank you, Pablo, for reminding me. Oh, my goodness. So did he ever say what the secret project was? I must have missed it. Was it He-Man or Highlander or Game of Thrones? No, no. I'm not going to say what it is. And no, I haven't said what it is. It's soon to be revealed. That's all you need to know right now. That's so all you need to know. And it's going to be huge. <laughs> Alright, I'm actually not... Um, actually didn't do quite as much tightening up on the pencils on this as I usually do. 
So uh, I don't know. That means I'm I'm thinking in my inks instead of just inking uh, what I've already penciled, which might kind of put a kibosh on my ability to explain stuff as I go. Hmm. Uh, you know, it sucks as I made a video the other day, like I was saying, you know, trying to trying to uh, use use what uh, I'm learning from watching Ethan's YouTube channel. Ethan Becker. Ethan Becker. I always got to say, I should just say Becker. Becker's YouTube channel. Um, I just thumbs up. It didn't work. Uh, Pablo, could you kind of talk him through that? Because I forget. I know you just did it, right? So you probably remember a little bit better uh, than I do the process of, of getting through the uh, security protocols of the Ethan Becker Discord. Link is in the description if you want to join. You'll just have to join and then explain or figure out how to uh, get through the security. Too many Ethans in internet drama. There's No, there's no internet drama with Ethan Becker. It's just... Good old fashioned uh, YouTube. And so, yeah, his the oldest, I don't know if it's the oldest video he's done, but the oldest video on his channel is only a year old. Who's that? Jay Potts. Not saying anything. Hi, Jay. Well, Jay's here at any rate. <laughs> So, um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, and he's got 350,000 subs already in a year. If that's if that if that's the case that his first video was a year ago, which that's what it looks like to me. I don't know. Maybe I'll ask him next time. But uh, that's that's the difference between doing just dynamic, fun, exciting videos. And it's, it's all still just art. I mean, just art. You know, people have a craving to learn how to do art. And uh, I think if you've got the talent for it, um, you can grow that kind of a channel. And Jay Potts is gone. Bye, Jay. Hi, Jay. And he's back. Hi, Jay. All righty. I can hear, like... Um, noise, like white noise coming from your mic, but I can't hear you. Oh, there, I heard something. Are you going to hear me? There you go. So am I like being streamed on YouTube as well? Uh-huh. Oh, wow. Oh, hey. I better not, better not say anything embarrassing. Huh? Don't say anything embarrassing. Especially about me. <laughs> oh, and who's that? David Peterson. Hi, David Peterson. Aloha. This is like one of the most unintuitive way of doing things I have ever freaking seen. You mean in in uh, you mean Discord? Like software. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't let me into this uh, voice channel. I had to click into the animator corner, and then all of a sudden, it let me into drawing corner. Really? Why, but hey, I'm here. That is strange. Did every just get everyone just get muted? I'm purposely muting. Oh, okay. All right. It just sounded yeah, like everybody but, just muted out at the same time. I was like, whoa. I got pushed to talk because uh, I don't have a headset right now. I uh, seriously need to go to stores and get one. It's so frustrating. <laughs> when that like, I drive everybody crazy. I, I do a lot of, uh, what do you call it, like uh, business voice chats through Discord, and they get so mad at me. So I need to just bite the bullet and get the headset. <laughs> Ugh, my brush. So I keep having to, like, moisturize, moisturize my brush. Um, because of the design, the way this brush is, it's not really, uh, what's up, Iman? Oh, he's muted too. Um, it doesn't hold, see how small the, the tip is? Like, when I'm using, you know, 
a Raphael size four. Look at that. Look how much ink that'll hold, right? And then so it kind of stays wet for a long time too. But with this, it's going to dry out. And so the tip is going to start kind of bugging after a while, which it's doing now. So I go in and I have a little uh, water cup there with a toothbrush and I, <laughs> I scrub the brush <laughs> to get all the dry stuff off the base, off of the barrel, they call it. And then uh, go in for some more. So, yeah, if you guys got any questions here or on YouTube, uh, do let me know. Uh, 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 change my avatar. Just hang out. Right on. Hanging out is cool. Makes me look popular on the Discord. Yeah, I want to be with cool kids. <laughs> I'm actually doing art too, but not that kind of art. I'm working in 3D Studio right now. So, I can hang out with my fully do art. Oh, cool. 3D Studio for what? Uh, the game I'm working on. Uh, I I made a battle cruiser a while back ago, but it's kind of junky and terrible. So I was like, you know, I think it's time to kind of like uh, kind of do a, another pass on it, try to make it. But so that's what I'm working on. Wow, very cool. Is that's the yeah. same game you were working on uh, when we were at the uh, bar? Yeah, yeah, same thing. I've been working on this thing probably a couple of years now. Really? I'll have to look and see when I posted my first few videos because I think it wasn't long when I started it. I decided to start posting some videos on it. That's kind of my thing. I don't know if it's going to work or not, but the idea is I've got a long road path ahead of me for like getting this thing done. So I was like, you know what? Maybe I should document like the process so people can see the game as well as see how the game is built. Yeah. And it's kind of mixed because, you know, watching somebody work with programming and 3D modeling really isn't that entertaining, I guess. But I'm trying to make the best of it. If you have any tips on that, I'm all ears. Tips on making the videos more interesting? Uh, yeah, just generally. Uh, also getting a crowd and stuff like that. I mean, were you, were you uh, live were, were you live streaming it? Or were you, are they videos? Uh, mostly just videos. I did a stream yard once just to kind of test it out. But I'm like, I don't have enough exposure, so nobody joins my live streams, which sounds really terrible. I, I don't really care. I sort of expected it, but... Uh, yeah, it would be nice to kind of, I don't know if you, like, have any tips on, like, the algorithm to try to, like, boost your videos and stuff like that. Um, I don't know, man. I only have 25 people watching me. <laughs> Elijah Montiero says, wow, that's my chin on Discord. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> There's your chin, yo. You can unmute and say hi, too, if you want. Mike from chin it is. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I haven't seen any of your videos. No, no offense. I haven't been to your channel. Um, yeah, I have an old dead channel that I haven't touched in ages, but it was more of a video game, like, hey, let's play video games sort of thing. And that actually got a lot of viewership, but that's kind of an easier audience to get to. The stuff I'm doing now is a lot harder because I don't think that many people either care or think to look up like game development. So. Well, I think you'd be surprised. There are, I mean, my, my son would probably dig that, and there's a lot of people that uh, that do want to work in, in games. So uh, a lot of them are probably on this channel, actually. This well, people are interested. On this, uh, this Discord. My, you, my YouTube channel I, I am on right now technically is a new channel, but in the description, I think, there's a link to it. So if anyone is interested, go check that. And thank you. You got it, bro. I'll probably check on that and make sure I actually have a link because that's going to be embarrassing if I don't. <laughs> All right. Occasionally, I do have to look up and see if anybody's got any questions. Oh, poor Elliot just got an update from him. He's struggling in this economy. A lot of people are. A lot of people are. Uh, Vimri says, I thought it was the other Ethan. We don't talk about the other Ethan on this channel. Thank you very there much. There is no other Ethan. There is no other Ethan. There is only Ethan Becker. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, definitely you guys got to check out his YouTube channel. It is, it is, it, it's good stuff, man. It's good. Uh, very much appreciate it. And uh, yeah, I'm trying to link it up now because I have a video, but not a link. So uh, I'm going to fix it. All right. <laughs> A video without a link. 
No, there's a link technically in the description of the video, but it's not the about. I'm, I'm putting it in, I'm covering my bases. Let's put it that way. All right. Right on, right on. Da, da, da. Dang, so many streams lately. Are you talking about me? I'm just, I'm just trying to, you know, like the walking stream. I made that, I made that members only this morning because, uh, I don't know. I think that's, that's not great content for growing a channel, but it is good content for my members who like, like that kind of extemporaneous stuff. But I do have to be a little more thoughtful about what kind of content I am putting on the channel <clears throat> for the general audience. Because it's still shrinking, man. Still shrinking. Still uh, still shedding some dead weight, I guess. Uh, I saw a video about him on the dude that draws without sketching. Uh, the dude that draws without sketch. Oh, Kim Jung Gi. Yeah, Ethan. <laughs> he did a video on Kim Jung Gi. That's actually how I found him. I saw that video and I, I legit. He clickbaited me. He clickbaited me into watching his channel, and then I started watching. I'm like, oh wow, this, he does really entertaining, entertaining vidges. Um. Hopefully, when he starts doing live streams, I'll be uh, getting invites for those. That would be very cool. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Ethan Becker worked on the new Voltron. Oh, did he? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, somebody go look up his whole uh, IMDb. He worked at Disney, I believe. He's a animator. Uh, I think he does character designs and animation. At least that's what it seems like from the art I've seen of his. You think what? I think you were cutting out. Everybody live stream right now? Is that how this works? And are we allowed to? What do you mean? On this channel? Yeah, because I noticed I can see you and your little uh, panel here. And everybody else has a panel, so I'm like, I started a live stream. Is that just going to show up then? Yeah. If you uh, if you we... share your screen, then we'll see what you're doing. If you want me to bring it up, I can show it. It doesn't matter, but I don't know if people on the Discord, I can probably share it. Yeah. I don't really care. You're just going to watch me fumbling around in 3D studio, but let's do it. I'm good with it. <laughs> Do it, man. Do it. Uh, uh, uh. Do it. Watch stream. All right, let's click on the watch stream. Um, This may have been a great mistake. Oh, here it goes. <laughs> Wait, is it? Oh, gosh. 3D, 3D Studios is not like live stream. No? Let's try that again. All right. <laughs> yeah, I done broke it. Uh, I, I noticed you can like share just an application. I was like, oh, that's cool. I'll just do that. But then, like, 3D Studio just started hemorrhaging. So I oh, no. that was a good idea. Let's try that again. There we go. That's less broken. There it is. Um. It was something like Jim G G uh, Jung Gi trash art or something like that. Yeah, that's what it. That's what it was. That's uh, that was the uh, clickbait that got me to watch my first Ethan Becker video. Oh my gosh, what is with this? I think I need to add some water to my ink because it's like just it's too thick. Not giving me my line. I need my line. All right. Can you share screen? Yes, Pablo. Do you have something? 
you have something you want to share, Pablo? We could bring you up too. You know, technically, I can do this on the underdog, uh, underdog mic, the Blacklist Universe Discord as well. You could. I could. I just never have. Actually, it's not a bad idea. Although, since I'm supposed to be teaching over here, I might as well just do it over here. <laughs> so what were you guys using on the, um, for, like, drawn and quartered? You weren't using Discord, were you? No, we were using uh, um, Google Hangouts. Uh, I use Team at work, so. Microsoft. Oh, great. Yeah, I forgot you guys just using Google Hangouts. I know you guys were talking about switching over to StreamYard, but there was a limitation with that, wasn't there? Like, number of people or something? Yeah, well, uh, last night I was using both, so I was, I was actually streaming with StreamYard, um, but I was split-screening on Google Hangouts, so... That's the uh, that was a trade off. I, I know it's like there's a there's what you can have like ninety nine people in a Discord, so it might be a good idea to move it over here. Gosh, I can't imagine ninety nine people in a Discord audio channel. That's got to be a mess. Yeah, I imagine. There's a there's a class going on right now. And that's the thing about this Discord. It's it's a it is an art Discord, um, the Becker one. And so there's a class going on right now, uh, on another one of the channels. If we like scrolled up, I, it would bounce me from this one. But it says classroom here. There's 28 out of 99, and it's live. Uh, so, oh, they're doing a look. They're doing live drawing, life drawing. You can do live life drawing classes. <laughs> I'm not doing anything, but I could start something. Hey, if you want to do it, uh, I'm going to jump it back to mine for the time being because I'm supposed to be the teacher here. <laughs> Are we TAs? Yeah, there you go. So my teacher's assistants are here to uh, fill dead air if I have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Just trying to keep it interesting. Yes. Where's I need my glasses. I need my glasses now. Oh, okay. That's why with my glasses I can see that there's a little bit of uh, scrub on the tip of my brush. That's what's keeping me from getting my good, good sharp hairline. Hairline line. Mm -mm -mm. So tell us. Uh, about your 3D Studio Max. What's your experience? Have you worked for gaming companies? No, nah, I'm pretty much totally indie, but I've been indie, I guess, before indie was a thing. I just never really gotten anywhere with it. But uh, I do uh, professional software development for like boring business stuff and all that. And uh, that's how I make the money. And then when I'm not doing that, I'm programming for fun and this is me programming for fun mm. my dad programmed for fun solidarity brother yeah it's the 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 market out there is gruelingly monotonous uh yeah it's just you know everybody wants like hey i need a client management system or i need this or i need that it's like okay so put things in database take things out of database rinse repeat a million times and that's basically what it is I think it's all old. I do the, uh, I do all the, I do all the niche weirdo stuff like try to do spike with stuff out in the lands, and, you know, barcoding, and now I'm at a place where I'm converting a COBOL application over to C sharp. I was about to say that sounds really exciting until you mentioned COBOL. <laughs> oh yeah, it's fun. It's a challenge. Yeah, I bet. it's like it's like. It's like millions of lines of code that have to get converted. Isn't that like like one of the oldest programming languages? Yeah, and it's very easy to read. So, okay. Elijah's learning C plus plus in college right now. Good, good stuff. Very 
then, then when you get into the then when you get into the real industry, you, you well, I think that bad. you get into embedded then you see more plus, but when you get you know to like the applications area, it's it's all it's either Java, C sharp or the language of the day. So, mm. Yeah, my primary make money language has been C sharp and actually Unity C sharp also. Um, I always recommend people learn C though because it's a little bit closer to the metal. So you kind of get a better understanding of computers and you know what programming actually does to make them do things. So huge recommendation to go with that. But yeah, if you actually want to make money at some point, I'll probably want to check out C sharp, possibly Java. Yeah. I just want them to be able to fix my computer. Yeah, that's always nice. I'm just kidding. He's <laughs> Learn to code, boys. Learn to code. <laughs> Bring back the meme. But we were talking about it today, and they there's uh, one guy who's he's in the databases. And he he goes basically he said, I don't understand how you can just sit here and do sit here and do that all day. He's done it before, but you can't. You know, after a while, he wanted to move up. He goes, I don't know how you can sit there and do it all day. It's basically like what you're doing there is focused on one thing in detail and constructing something from nothing all the way up to something it's, it is it's a lot of monotony it's a lot of sitting there and just focusing mm. yeah when you're building an application from the ground up that can be pretty exciting if you're part of the design you know element because uh, it's really cool I, I find it interesting anyway it's just you know going okay i don't have anything and here are the client's requirements how can i put this in a nice hierarchy that is sensible you know it takes care of their stuff and it's Button free, and that's like getting a really big, you know, 100,000 piece puzzle and putting that together. And that gets kind of exciting. But then comes maintenance mode. That's like, ah, oh, this doesn't quite work right, or this needs tweaking. And then you're just like going back and forth on it, just like messing with little lines of code here and there, trying to get something to, to work that hasn't been quite working right. And I don't know, that gets kind of boring. After do you while. guys? Do you guys just sit in the room with the lights off? I do actually. Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say that trope's actually pretty accurate. <laughs> No, I mean, because I when I worked at Ion Storm, it was like that was the thing you you try to go into the programmer room, and it's just like the depths of darkness. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, it's. Uh, I don't know why we like it dark. We're just weird that way. See, I came up old school. I, I my first job was working at a place that did medical billing, and uh, they had a big old data center that was all encased in glass, and they had the mainframes there and. They had they they called them disk packs and they're basically they're 10 megabyte well, at that time they were 10 megabyte drives that were roughly the size of a file cabinet and you could you know if you had to do maintenance on them or whatever you could you know take them offline and literally unscrew the top and pull out the disks and these disks were oh geez they got to be at least 15 to 18 inches long. Hmm. And I think they're made out of ceramic or something. I forget. I forget the actual. But they're 18 inches long. And, you know, you could use them like a frisbee, but they might take your hand off if you throw them too hard. Mm. So they had, uh, you know, the inside of the mainframes. They they had a bunch of boards. It's just stacks and stacks and stacks of boards. And they're they were all made using wire wrapping, which is basically this is the old days when they used to like put chips into the socket. And then they had these long prongs come out of the bottom of those sockets and they'd take wire and they'd wrap it around one end of the socket and route it all the way over to another one and then wrap it on that one. And you just see these cards, with all these chips on it with all these wires just going around. And uh, one time, one guy uh, tried compiling an application. It was a big COBOL program and it would shut down the entire mainframe just by compiling it. Well, they found out that one of those wires had actually rubbed on a, on a post and was shorting out. And only when they compiled that one particular application would it actually, you know, fault something in the mainframe that mm. had shut it down. So, you know, that was, that was, that, that, all that stuff was fun. Now it's all done for you. You sound like you've been programming since the 80s. Uh, 91. Nine. And it technically, technically in the 80s when I was doing that. Hmm. So, yeah. I'm an old time. <laughs> Where have you worked? I'm an old, 
Um, oh, geez. Um, worked in medical billing. Uh, worked in, I don't like giving companies. Oh. Worked in uh, barcoding for several years. Uh, I actually interviewed at Microsoft. I've, I've worked at Audible, automotive companies as well. Um, so, in fact, some very large automotive companies that you and I uh, both on this side of the pond and the other side of the pond. I worked for a metrology app, a uh, metrology company um, that's actually was global. And I've taken trips over to Europe and I took a trip over to Israel. Actually, Israel was my first trip outside of the United States. So that was fun. I was able to walk from uh, I was able to walk from my hotel room right over to Jaffa. So and go kind of mill around there and I saw the the um, I saw the one uh, the one building where um, Peter had his vision on the tower at Java. Oh, so really? It was actually there. Very anticlimactic. It's a door. It just has a thing on it. <laughs> Somebody lives there. Um, I don't think they. I don't think they would have taken it very high. It's like in San Diego. There's like these little plaques like on the floor once in a while, um, and it just says. Uh, back in this day, this thing happened. It's like everybody's just walking over it. Yeah, it basically. Yeah. So, but those, uh, all those old buildings, they, they, they preserved all the old buildings, and they actually have people living in there now. They currently, they periodically renovate. Mm. So, it's very interesting. But yes, yeah, so I've been around, around a long time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Mike, start teaching us. Well, if you've got any questions about the process, um, I don't know what to say. When you're inking with a brush, um, the trick is it's you don't feel the brush, right? There's no, it's all hand-eye coordination. So there's no, there's no like, oh, I can feel the brush is now hitting the paper because it's the tip of the brush is like, a hair's breadth so unless you're like I don't know, i'm trying to think of a superhero that's got the ability to, <laughs> to sense teeny tiny changes in any kind of pressure or whatever come on nerds give me something nothing huh yeah eventually no, I just realized I had some uh, stuff I was working on earlier. I'm like, it's probably confidential, so I had to kill the stream for a bit, so I like to make sure all this stuff's clean. Oh. <laughs> so maybe I should. Uh... Piezo pickup man. Hmm. Piezo pickup man. You know those piezo elements that. Piezo. Oh, no. I don't know what that means. I'm not sure if that's a, a software developer thing. Yet. That one. Just, just, just never mind. <laughs> Maybe you didn't hear anything. You uh, got it. You heard nothing. Can you guys click on each other's stuff to watch? You can, right? I think so. Yeah, you can move it and click on somebody else's thing and it puts their, their stuff main main screen. Calliope says the brush is the subtle knife. That's interesting. Interesting way to put it. Yeah, that's why like if I'm pulling lines, um, if I'm trying to do long parallel lines, it's like it's how close the brush is 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 uh, that's why I have my fingers stacked up. So it's like I'm resting my hand on the page and then. I can tell when it touches, and then I can repeat that over and over again, like that. But I got to pull lines in order to do that because, uh, like I said, when you're pulling line or pull pushing lines, when you're pulling lines, you you're you're only using the the movement of the metacarpal bones, your fingers. Is it metatarsals? Metacarpals. Metacarpals are your hands. Metatarsals are your feet, right? Um, a long time since I took anatomy. <laughs> so what you see me doing here is I'm rotating the brush. Like I'll go like this to try to get the best tip because it's got different uh, 
I don't know. It's not. It's not like. It's not machine. Well, I guess this is machined technically, but still, you're going to have imperfections in all of the different um, individual hairs, and so it can it can lay down a line differently depending on how you what angle you're approaching the brush from. When you're dealing with stuff that's this teeny tiny, right? If you're dealing with bigger splotchy, you know, it's like, oh, I just got to do big old things like this, then it's not going to matter. But uh, when you're trying to get these razor thin lines with the brush, then that's what you have to pay attention to. It is indeed. So I don't know if you guys can see what I'm doing. How is the visual? Yeah, what the heck? I think I'll spin my game up real quick. I wanted to. Oh, wait. What do I want to do? I want to do something. Spin the game. Spin it, boy. I need to figure it out. That's what I need to do. So, is your game going to be. Uh, how long is it going to take for you to have it done? I don't really know. I'm thinking at least another year of uh, at least features and stuff like that, but uh, it's really hard to say. I kind of probably bit off more than I can chew. This game's kind of been a dream of mine since I was a kid. I always wanted to play uh, Space Trader with like unlimited freedom, where it's not just you have a ship and that's it, but like you could build like an empire out of it. You know, start out with practically nothing, almost no money to your name, and a cruddy old spaceship, and end up working your way up. So you're like, you know, and then, you know, I guess like a corporate donor or something like that, a CEO with like hundreds of freighters and space stations and stuff like that. I just thought that'd be really fun. Such games do exist, but they have their issues. And I'm trying to sort of create a game similar, same genre, but also uh, fix what I consider to be some really nasty flaws. All right. A huge fan of the X series, and no, those aren't X Men, although that would be relevant to this chat. But yeah, it's basically a space trading game, really fun, just kind of hard to get into. And the user interface is terrible, let's just say space trading like Mule, yeah, kind of like a little bit like Mule. I didn't play a lot of Mule, but I'm a little familiar with it. It's a little bit in that vein, but obviously 3D, and, you know modern graphics and stuff yeah you know there was a there was an rpg game out a long time ago 1970s early 80s where they did um it was a space trading game I, and i got a couple of books somewhere down in my basement and it's killing me because i can't remember the name of it that wasn't mule it was the mule go back to the 70s i know it's yeah. pretty old super old it's one of the oldest oldest games for computers no, this wasn't a computer game. This was like like the old school Dungeons and Dragons game. Oh, no, that sounds fun. I've been watching. Uh, I can't remember the YouTube channel's name, but the guy introduced everybody to a uh, pen and paper game called Traveler, which was kind of in that vein. And you know, I think that was it. It might have been. Yeah, really Traveler's pretty old. I don't know if it went that far back, but it looked really fun. I heard a fun little thing about that, and that is. When you're character creating, there's actually a chance you could die before you even play the game. And I thought that was kind of interesting. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, the earliest games I can remember, I mean for, for PC, because we my my dad, you know, my dad was a programmer. Um was uh Eastern Front and Mule, Necromancer. He used to just come home with like, uh, you know, games that I guess at that point he was just downloading them from whatever the precursor to the web was called. <laughs> it was like the BBSs or something. Yeah, bullet board systems. Yeah. 2400 watt modem. I don't want to sound like a young guy, but I sort of was, I'm a little too young for BBS. <laughs> Not too, too young, though. I think I just missed them. Well, was your dad into that? No. I, funny enough, I'm kind of the only, well, by blood anyway, the only person in my family that got into computers for whatever reason. 
Uh, my parents got into medical, and I've got an uncle who went to police work, and a cousin who went to like firefighting and stuff. And everybody kind of went emergency services, and for some reason, I got a keyboard in my hand. I don't know why. Yeah. How old are you? Uh, I'm going to be 37 this year. How do you even know about Mule? Because I, I like computer games, even when they're old. Wow. Because, yeah, I'm, 40, I'm 48, grade. and I was, a, you know, I was a little kid when we were playing that. I was like, yeah. Well, I know Elite Dangerous has been a pretty big game lately, and uh, Elite, I think the original Elite came out pretty long ago. It was around, it was either early, yeah, I think it was early 80s, though. These were in 82, 83, which would have been about when I was born. So the Space Trader genre was apparently a pretty big deal back then. Yeah, that would have been, let's see, how old was I when we had our first computer? We had the Atari 800. Uh, of course, my dad had his like PC system that he brought home to work on. But uh, gosh, how, how old was I? Was it third, fourth grade, something like that? So maybe 79, 80, 78, 79, 80, something like that. When did the 400 come out and the 800? I think the 800 came out first. Four, well, it, yeah, 400 came out first, and I think it was like late 70s because I had a buddy who had one. Mm -hmm. And then they came out with the 800. So I, I still say it was probably in the late 70s, but it went into the 80s. All right. I think we had the – I know we had both, but I'm, I think we might have had the 800. I don't remember, man. I was a kid. That was my dad. My dad, uh, we had a go kart. My dad made me learn how to touch type uh, 35 words a minute, I think, before I could drive my go kart. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I was like, you're my reward for. So I can well, touch type. Right. I can touch type pretty quick now. A big deal. At some point, everybody needed to learn how to type. Yeah. Alan Walker says Pong. Yeah, that was my first video game. My dad did yeah, that. Pong. Old nerds, by the way. Don't just say nerds. Hey, man. All right, I'm old. Jump. I'm an OG nerd. Just to let you know, OG nerd. I was a nerd before it became popular to be nerd. Yep. Was it ever really popular? No, not right. No, just our culture got popular. Nerd culture took over. See, that's why I consider it an annexation. Hmm. So how do you how do you draw without like smudging it? Uh, I let it dry before I run my hand across it. You also start from top left and go to bottom right, typically? No, I go from bottom right up, usually. That's why I started with him, and then I'm doing I'm doing the larger characters. But I'll do panel to panel. I'll do the bottom right and move up. Because um, if I start on the top left, then the oils from my skin will coat the paper as I go down. And it may be minuscule, Ooh, but, but if you're working with the brush, uh, that means the ink isn't going to stick as well. As if you're super for a clean sheet of paper in order to get that, I guess, tactile. Well, I do, but you know, you got to pencil it too. So, but, but more of the point is if you're working from low right, that also means that everything has to be dry before you start with your own. Um, yeah, well, I mean, yeah. look, so look, here, I'm putting this, I'm, maybe... I'm putting this ink down here. And I'm watching it evaporate. So, you know, most of it's dry now. And all of it's dry. See? Judging. No judging. Now, uh, if I'm that, and that's a big old glop, you know, big old fat line. If I'm just doing a hair breadth line, that dries almost instantly. So, as long as I'm using. Uh, ink like if I use a 
Where's the Bemoji? You guys know the Bemoji brushes, right? If I'm using a Bemoji brush, and it's got the the ink that comes in the brush, because you can refill these with regular ink. Um, you're not supposed to, but you can. If you are using that ink, that ink takes forever to dry. So that uh, I have smudged, and it's been really irritating. But, uh, yeah. And then quills. Quills leave an actual bead of ink on the paper. So that you do have to be more careful when you're inking to try not to smudge. Uh, oftentimes, if I'm just inking, I'm being an inker, not like a pencil and an inker, and I'll have multiple pages to work on. If I'm using a quill, I will ink a section and I will move it and then grab another page and then let that one dry for a bit. Mm -hmm. All the inking tricks. So let's talk about Bitcoin. <laughs> How's Bitcoin doing? All the programmers. Yeah, so Come on, programmers. Sorry, uh, you must care. You have to. You're programmers. Dude, I was I was mocked. I was mocked to have a phone that did texting. That was less than <laughs> ten years ago. So so you're a programming Luddite. You betcha. <laughs> I, it's like I, work, you think. I, I, I work with that stuff day in and day out. It doesn't hold any fascination. Uh, yeah, that's funny. My dad was kind of, I mean, he loved, he loved all that stuff, but um, it certainly wasn't his hobby. His hobby would be like, you know, boats and planes and crap like that. Well, you kind of have you kind of have to have a separate hobby, or else you just you burn out. Yeah. So I take a walk every day, or else I work. I take a walk every other day, or else my heart burritos. my heart will eventually explode. Over burritos, good ones too. Yes, the best. Oh, it's almost Friday. It's my cheat day. So yeah, so. I feel like I wasted my one trip to San Diego about eight or so years ago. You didn't get any Mexican food. No Mexican, no uh, no, no, none of the breweries, nothing, nothing fun. Well, I wouldn't say nothing. It was in the gas lamp, but you know, uh, nothing. Yeah, no, nothing, nothing that would be. I would do a lot of things differently. Hey, there's uh, there's some good places to eat in the gas lamp. Eight or nine years ago, yeah, there was there is, really yeah. good Mexican I'm not saying there isn't. I'm just saying, um, I think I, I I'm kind of. Feeling dumb for myself that I even think about in and out. I think at that point I was I was in a the phase of my life where I still didn't really take taxis or something. Or I don't know. I don't know what's going on with me. What state do you live in? Me, Maryland. Yeah. Where? Maryland. What? Maryland. Okay. Maryland. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, it was a uh, yeah, I'm, I'm Metro DC basically, so occasionally I'll get out to conferences and stuff. Uh, I Colorado uh, two years in a row, just past couple. Man, I was, uh, I got to Denver for a con and I was, because I have like two, three hundred pounds worth of prints that I'm lugging with me and I'm trying to drag them around. Uh, to find my hotel. Oh my gosh, I thought I was going to die because there's no oxygen. And I didn't even realize, I didn't think about how high up Denver is. And so I'm like, I'm seriously thinking I'm having a heart attack. That first day can be a little. <laughs> Mike, where do you get the knowledge on what stocks to invest in? I don't pay attention to stocks, I'm, I only do crypto. Mm, stocks. That's more of my own. Well, maybe you I can, just you can answer. Here. My strategy is actually really super simple. Wait for a company that you know is going to be around for a while to have a bad day, buy up stock, and then just wait. <laughs> That's as defensible as anything else. Works great well, for me. My friend, uh, my friend uh, has the, the idea that if you if you see an upcoming technology or an upcoming business and you like their business, and you, you know, invest in that. So he invested in Amazon when it was like a buck. Yeah, that, wow. 
I bet he's a real happy to hear that. He is. So that's a bit more of a, I don't want to say a speculator's type thing, but that's, uh, you, know, you can like something and have it already priced in and everything else. Yeah, you can, but uh, work for him. Yeah. <laughs> like, man. These are great hamburgers. I'm going to invest in the stock for McDonald's. Except they're really not that great. Is in and out yeah, have stock? Somebody doing their toenails? <laughs> Me? I'm playing uh, games while I'm talking. Oh, it just feel, sounds like so it's someone's a clipping. Loud controller for whatever. Ah, I gotcha. Oh, okay, that makes sense. I got one of those. This game is called Clipping My Toenails. I am very good at it. No, I'm just playing a standard Mario game on an emulator. Oh, man, I got that Mario Builder on Switch. That game is so great. The what? Uh, Super Mario Builder. Is that what oh, it's called? Mario Maker. Mario Maker, that's it, yeah. The second one. Oh, it's so much fun. Yeah, I watch so much of it on Twitch. I just, I, I, I kind of get tired of it. That, I don't know. Levels run the same. Yeah, I, I guess I can see that. But I don't know. I was watching it on YouTube and everybody having so much fun. It's kind of what made me get it. I'm like, dude, I got to try that level and see if I can beat that record. Yeah. All right, if anybody just jumped in, uh, the link to the Discord, the, it's Ethan Becker's Discord, and uh, the link is Thanks, in the Ethan. description. Thank you, Ethan Becker. So you can just jump in here if you want, and uh, you've got questions relating to art or stocks. <laughs> it it kind of happened, yeah. <laughs> Or whatever. We can talk about Bitcoin. I don't mind. I like talking about Bitcoin. Everyone uh, has their passions. Yeah. Well, it's uh it's the future, man. It's the future. Programmers should know better. So when do you expect all those uh, lovely books to arrive? The third. Okay, so next week. Yeah, terrified. Uh, have the children learned to assemble line yet? <laughs> uh, we're going to have to figure it out. Going to have to figure that out. <clears throat> it's going to be on-the-job training. I mean... Your daughter must know some high schoolers that have nothing better to do. Um, well, I am a, a leader, a high school leader at my church. I could just. No, 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 no. Conscription's bad. Oh, all right. You Wait. Know, you're giving her a turn on something, even if it's, you know. Why is high, um, high school okay, but church is bad? Or snacks. Yeah, paid them in something. <laughs> They'll have their eternal bad. reward. Bad if you just conscript high schoolers and say, you know, you, you pay them the minimum wage and tell them, you know, or double minimum wage just to tell them not to go away and just take it. You know, okay, well, I guess now I'm talk, talking about under under the table stuff on the internet. So I guess that's a, that's a no go for Mike. Is, uh, stuff. Yeah, here's, here's I would. Scram. Yeah, I would never do that. I will always pay my taxes for everything I spend money on. Yes. Cook the chicken? Is it already marinated? Is it already marinated? Oh, so it'll be marinated in 10 minutes. All right. Well, I guess we've got about 10 minutes left, guys. Somebody's, somebody's got to cook the chicken. Specific timing on your marinade? Uh, no, they just said about 10 minutes. So, you know, your kids want to eat. Haven't they thought about us? I know, right? Yeah. How dare they? You've ruined my childhood. You're ruining their childhood. 
All right, all right. Yes, sir. So yeah, for fulfillment, I don't know what kind of scale you're doing. I know I've certainly, uh, I, I can imagine in my own head, and certainly I've seen, Greg, Greg uh, Snape was working on an entirely different uh, scale. Yeah. But, you know, he has that whole weaponized uh, fulfillment uh, company that he works with. Yeah, no, I don't need that. I've only got about 3,000 things to ship out. I don't know what I don't know what my cutoff would be, but two thousand wasn't too bad, so I figured three thousand can't be. I mean, we've already done this a couple of times, so uh, yeah. How long? Have you Holy cow! The last one? I mean, I only had like three hundred and fifty packages to send out for for the mag, oh. so it was like nothing. Okay, well, what about uh, Lone Star One? Yeah, that was like two thousand. Okay, and that took you two weeks. Ah, uh, it took a while. It right. took a minute. <laughs> I mean, I can't pretend to know your numbers to say whether handing it off to professionals is better or not, but, uh, uh, well, you know what? Uh, I heard a lot of complaints about stuff getting damaged from the professional fulfillment companies and man, I got, well, it, I got it, it, almost it nothing. Numbers, so I can see that. Yeah. I got almost no damages on, uh, on the whole Meg campaign. I think I had, I think I had three, maybe two. So, uh, if I can keep that, that's like a what a one percent um, damages. So you got to pack them with care and make sure everything's right. right. All right. All the sports gamblers are investing the market right now. Uh, just got here. At first, I thought it was Ethan Becker, the knife designer. I didn't know there was an Ethan Becker knife designer. That's cool. Well, it always gets back to the mystery question of how much are, has, has the market got, you know, accounted for what they think the future is going to be and all that other stuff. Wait, what? Well, after, you know, they talk about the idea of taking in costs. Obviously, at the, if you believed in what was going to happen with coronavirus actually happened, uh, you, you would have said, okay, well, you know, everybody's sort of praying it's going away. They're not acting on the market side of it. So uh, I don't want to say you could short things. The reason that they would usually let you short things is because things usually don't go negative. They usually go positive. Mm. Oh, oh, like how oil was selling for like negative 13 bucks because nobody could store it. Well, because, well, because, or, or conversely, nobody said ahead of time, we're going to stop producing oil because everything's going to shut down in the next month nobody wanted to believe that so like so like how there's the cluster of people even in the financial sector who didn't want to believe 2008 was going to happen and despite the fact that the, you know they were kind of projecting these kinds of behaviors for a couple of years oh let's see what pablo's doing Hum humans humans are interesting creatures right. they uh they like to operate with the herd even if they have uh, sufficient information to Go otherwise. Because, uh, no naughty bits, Pablo. No naughty bits. Usually the herd, herd will protect you. <laughs> yeah. Even if you get it wrong, you know, how bad can it be? So you're talking about investing and stuff like that. You're talking about you're not going to get wiped out, but you are trying to win along the margins. And so the question then is, is, is the recovery, are the people that are looking at the recovery already in the market and therefore things are already high, and if not, then yeah, get in, because things are coming back. But if not, then the window is already closed, so maybe he knows something about whether that window is closed or not. He whom? Uh, Opie Dog. Oh. Up oh, Dog. Yeah, all we know is just a person on the internet who's saying random stuff to uh, go by. That's how it goes. That's no my whole the, show. That's my whole show. We have a good idea that you know the squirrel. Squirrel. How do you know? I'm very attracted to them, obviously. I I never let one go but that, without noticing. <laughs> uh, what is Pablo drawing? Good math. 
It's good if you've got a ton of money to have a few Bitcoin, but it's not a smart bet. Oh, it's not a bet. I think your Bitcoin will crater again and then go up at some point. Um, if it goes down, it may go down a little bit, but nah. not much. I, ex I still expect something fundamental to happen. That will the, the soften the trust in some aspect of it. The what? Mm -hmm. Well, there's, I mean, there's a lot of different ways just from the point, point of the Bitcoin being the thing. We've already seen other uh, failures and other fraudsters out there. I think there'll be probably one more big one in the future. And you get in it there and then it will kind of go up as it becomes a type of an accepted media. <laughs> So I think I kind of agree with you. There's more room to go. Yeah. Um, but I think there's also more room to fall. Well, there's all. Yeah. What are you doing? What did you just knock down? Don't just randomly knock stuff down. You have to pick it up. Um. I'm sure they're talking to a child or a cat. Uh, yeah, my son. <laughs> Oh, that's a yes. Yes. Back, yes. Child cat. Um, Why did you get in the vent again? <laughs> I don't I'm think it'll fall. I mean, you gotta you gotta track you gotta track the, the dailies and all that stuff, but uh, I don't think it would fall. I don't know. I don't. I can't prognosticate exactly, but. It wouldn't fall much. I doubt it could fall by, I don't know, 20% max. Um, and really, I don't think it, I don't think it even. Did you not get to 4,000 a few weeks ago? Uh, yeah, but that was, that was before the halving. That was months ago, actually. But that was, that was before the halving. The halving just happened. All of the Bitcoin, all of the Bitcoin. Yes, and the halving is a psychological event. No, yes. it's not. But how is it? How is it worth any more than it was before? Do you know what the having is? That will be our uh, usually, when you're talking about that in stock, you're talking about having double amount of the things for half the price. Uh, that's the opposite of what the having is. Mm -hmm. The having is is a it uh, the processing power required to. Hey, can you turn the volume down on that? I'm trying to stream. Nothing, nothing the processing power. Hold on. You, law still apply. Nothing is created or, or destroyed. Um, let me let me explain it. The having is when the processing power is doubled and the production of Bitcoin is cut in half. So if you have if you maintain the exact amount of of demand for new Bitcoin, and you've got half the production value or the the number of Bitcoin being produced. Then it creates a a automatic. Uh, I mean, the law of supply and demand just kind of kicks in. That's why after the having, every time after the having, Bitcoin bops around for a little bit, and then it has about a year and a half to two years of just skyrocketing. Well, that sounds like something out of a dystopian novel. Yeah, there's still some, there's something here that still rubs me the wrong way because nothing nothing is created. Out of nothing, and my understanding of such things is usually you're trading something from one person to another person, and never returning back to that pure asset itself. Um, no, I was just talking about the name, the having. So, um, you know, people like you know, people people went into the lottery. Like, like the other Zell fiction where they deciding that they're going to murder half the children because population needs or something. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. China, yeah. yeah. China, yes. They give them bad ones. Well, that's how you do the super soldier. You just kill off all the bad ones, and then you uh, start the next generation with a new breed. So. <laughs> wow, we're going all over the place. Yes, we are. That guy? We call it the Havoc. Aren't you happy that Dr. Bunny stepped in? Buy Johnson & Johnson, says Updog. My base is in I-8. I know. Boy, if you'd have invested in toilet paper before this whole thing happened, you'd be rich. Oh, 
Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, can you guys hear that? Sounds like when your kids is playing something weird. Yeah, it's Phantom of the Opera, but it's like oh. freaking they've got Cortana cranked all the way up to max. Cortana? Yeah. So Cortana's playing Phantom of the Opera. Yeah. I'm gonna try that out because I didn't know that was a thing, but not right now. What is it? I don't I don't understand what a thing it is. I mean, I know what Cortana is. I know what it is in Windows. I'm guessing you asked her to. It's it's like it's it's like Alexa. Oh, man, I, if, uh, if there any fear or a, a person, I will smack it in the face right now. This is so frustrating. I hate you being on this program. This is why I signed to not art. Well, that's true. <laughs> bad art, but it's nice. I have art on both sides of my family, but I feel more comfortable with the computer programming aspect. Yeah, no, I don't. Oh God, how would how would I think about my own family? I don't know that I've got much of anything. Uh, my sister, my sister, sort of the diametric opposite of me. She went more art than anything else. Um, worked film for a little while and kind of got it, but she's still kind of more that world. And, uh, she's she's strange that that caught me. You know, my parents, you know. Clear predilection there. My mother was trained as a home teacher. My father didn't go to college until his late forties, and even then, it was just like getting associate's degree. And don't get me wrong, he's smart as I am, but uh, we didn't sort of have that family affinity thing. So, yeah, college doesn't necessitate brains. I didn't even bother petitioning the board no, to get my associate's yeah. degree. But I'm just saying, there's it's not like. Like I came from a background of engineers or musicians or something, so um, just people that did stuff, I guess. All of your bad mic audios make me realize that I need a computer sound bar more than ever. <laughs> We're like all out of balance now. Well, it might have something to do with the non-stop background noise in my house. I'm not entirely sure. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to wrap it up because it's too much noise for me, and i got to go make dinner. You guys can hang out in the Discord. Everybody can go hang out in the Discord if you want to. a little bit weird, but, uh, I mean, yeah, maybe you should, uh, I mean, I've been having a good time hanging out so far. I've got my language off of the uh, naughty side. Um, you know, I can work with doing these. I don't want to say more often, but you know, once every couple of weeks. Hey, I'm enjoying it. Because pop in. Yep, Rando's popping in. So this is what I was working on. Secret project patch page. Before oh, yeah. I'm very certain I know what your secret project is. I'm not going to say it obviously because otherwise you can have it. That is correct. But uh, this this will be this will be fun when this goes live. Yes, I cannot wait to see. You certainly got further than I did. It's so. gonna be yeah. it's gonna be uh, volcanic, atomic. Uh, I'm on page. I finished page fifteen, uh, and then this is page a thir page thirteen patch. So, fifteen pages in, forty eight pages. So I'm almost a third of the way there. So we can I'm interested in the synergistic element of what might happen versus um, um, yeah. certain loud noises coming from you know, certain people. Oh yeah, I can't wait to see. I mean, dude, you've got somebody uh, with almost a million subs who's going to be promoting this. That's what I want to see. I want to see. Yeah, and some of the related outlets there from. That's okay. right. No, no. Yeah. So, what kind of chicken so, are we having? Uh, probably uh, Kalbi teriyaki. And I got to go cook it now. So, thanks everybody for being here. I'm ending the broadcast. You guys over you on. Uh, good night, you guys. <laughs> I'm going to hang up here. Awesome. Later, guys. And for you all over there in, uh, oh my gosh, it's so bloody loud in here. Thanks guys for being here. I'll see you. Um, I don't think I'm going to be streaming again tonight. So maybe cross examinations tomorrow. Have a good one. God bless. Peace out. So much for the glory of Rome.